Hello and welcome to Heather and Hops. My name is Kat and I'm a knitter based in Hertfordshire in the United Kingdom. It still feel, feels weird that I, I kind of now have a thing that I say that really Alex should always just do because he's better at it. But this is my little space on the internet where I've documented my knitting journey from project one through to now where I have quite a few over 200 projects under my belt, under my needles. Um, and we've cultivated a nice little kind of community over here. So welcome if you're new. I hope you enjoy a knitting chat. Uh, and if you've been here before, it's lovely to see your face again. I'm actually enjoying a tea today, which was a very sweet gift from a lovely friend. Yoyanika, uh, thank you so much. And it's kind of, um, I don't, I don't know what the tea is, but it has like an almost hint of like a bergamotiness, like so it's a little bit like an Earl Grey, but it's got sort of smokiness too. It's sort of, yeah, it's lovely. Um, I'm gonna try and remember to keep drinking it. Uh, I do often get carried away just chatting about knitting, but I'm really enjoying it. And I also wanted to share another gift that lovely Yannicka sent me, um, just because it's so damn cute and. I did get some photos of Audrey wearing it and I'm hoping to get some ones now that I've adjusted it just a tiny bit. But <laughs> uh, Yannicka took part in the Three Intentions knit along and actually has knitted Audrey a tiny version of the wrap and <laughs> so I, I definitely cried while receiving this kind of parcel as it is but when I saw this on Audrey and the fact that the effort like the effort and the love and you know the cute idea that got into it I did I did well up a couple of times and little Audrey has worn it and I'm really hoping to do some sort of matchy matchy pictures of it soon I added a little button because Audrey's a little bit bigger um but it's perfect it's so sweet and I just really wanted to share so Audrey does have she's got a matching scarf to my Caligardana top um I'll try and put a picture in uh, because it's very sweet she, we can do matchy matchy but she also has a Christmas scarf which I updated at Christmas and I put the kind of recipe for it on my Ravelry page um, just in the project uh, and I'll try and remember to link that too uh, so I think I just yeah it's just so sweet and I do think Audrey's got a few more scarves in her horizon even if it's just you know, for a few photos. She's very sweet, she does enjoy wearing them, or at least she doesn't, you know, acknowledge that she's wearing them, if that makes sense. Anyway, I hope you're really well. I feel a lot better than I had done previously, which is nice. I did show you most of my finished objects last week, but I do have a few under my needles. I don't know why I keep saying under my belt, it's very strange. Um, and one of them, I'm wearing, which you really can't see very well. <laughs> but let me tell you, this project kind of made my heart sing more than I could express probably. I had a few fun little projects that I got to work on that kind of knitted themselves. I finished a few projects that I've had for a while. One in particular that I really can't tell you how much I love and it's been just about cold enough to get a few wears out of it already which was my uh, land girl jumper jersey which is a pattern by Whistlebear um, but that's in last week's episode but I, I've worn that quite a bit and that really did bring me joy and that joy of knitting with a woolly wool um, and a little bit of mohair kind of got me in the mood for more sheepy sheepy yarn and I really I've been missing colour work I don't know about anyone else but I do enjoy the look of textured jumpers and I really enjoy knitting them like that kind of seems to be where I'm more drawn but colour work itself really makes me happy. It's kind of why I started knitting in the first place. You can't quite get the same effect with crochet. There's you know, there's similar, like you can, but it takes a lot of work and 
for me it's not as freeing. So I really wanted to do some colour work and I think I have a real desire to cast on the Yale Cardigan by Murray Wallen to join in with uh, Knitting with Cat Hairs. Hi Nikki if you're here. Um, lovely Murray Wallen knit along because I've really wanted to do colour work f for a while and I really haven't ever done an all over colour work in that capacity so I think that that might be something that I start looking at swatching for um, but anyway I was having a little look on Ravelry and I was looking at my queue and my favourites and I had some Mondim yarn which was actually purchased for a shawl that I'll show you in a little bit um, but the colours weren't right I wanted something dark with um, a lighter contrast and so I had a little play with what I had in my wool pantry and I found this which is this cone of woolly knit British 100% British wool that I have knitted with already and I really can't wait to show you and I promise I'm gonna get around to that very soon um, I knitted a sort of 1900 cycling jersey and it's very cool in this yarn and I really enjoyed working with it I purchased this at the same time because I was unsure if I was going to use the colours that I ended up going with and I really I like this colour a lot it's sort of brown with some grey in there and some slightly darker almost black bits and for me very practical uh, being the <laughs> I always describe myself as a toddler when it comes to clothes and that's true I'm very hard wearing on them I try and take care of them without um, not wearing them you know like I, I, I'm quite hard on them and then I've got my little basket of things I found this which is a yarn I purchased when I was lucky enough to go to Oslo for the Oslo Stricker Festival I think it was 2019 Wow, um, which happened to be sort of my first yarn festival apart from Yarn Porium, which I'd been to on my own the year before. Um, so it was my second yarn festival ever. And outside was Telespin, and this is 80% Norwegian mohair and 80% Norwegian lamb's wool. And it was very reasonably priced. I can't remember what it was at the time, but they're 150 gram, uh, 50 gram balls with 150 meters. Um, I think Vega is that the color? F006. I will try and remember to put it on screen, whatever it says, and have a little quick look. Um, but I've used a, one of the pink skeins that I got for my wedding shawl. Um, I haven't used any of the rest. I did, I purchased a sweater's quantity near enough. Um, I got a couple of colours so that I could maybe do colour work. I wasn't quite sure. Um, I did think maybe a ranunculus but we're not doing that. We wanted colour work and I, I saw these two together and I was like okay that's that's the one and I had, this is the pattern. Sorry, have to explain. Um, the pattern that I'd seen is, forgive me, I don't know Finnish or any, I'm very terrible with words, um, but this is the Sulaulu, I believe, uh, by Jenna Kay, and I couldn't be happier with it, if I'm honest. So, I did a tiny little swatch of uh, the stockinette and my gauge doesn't tend to change too much from colour work to stockinette. It does a tiny bit so what I did was as the pattern suggested I didn't need to adjust my needle size which is great um, and I cast on the second size. I wanted a bit more ease and from what I had read um, the first size has uh, an odd number of repeats so it wouldn't have been symmetrical which wouldn't have bothered me too much but I just really wanted something symmetrical and so I cast it on 
um, and it's bottom up so you knit ribbing then the colour work knit up to the where you divide for the sleeves work the front and the back separately and then pick up for the sleeves and knit them down and around um, I think I made a few minor adjustments I can actually say that I did put my notes in Ravelry I was enjoying it so much that and I was knitting it quite quickly while I was quite unwell so I had my computer next to me and I was just adding notes as I went so if you do want to know what modifications I did uh, in more detail I guess or you know to refer back to them they are they are on Ravelry for a change from memory I did adjust slightly the underarm I bound off a few stitches that would have been on the shoulders um, I thought I'm not I didn't need as many stitches in the shoulders it would have come further down I knew that because I picked the larger size it was going to be a bit more oversized so I used some of these shoulder stitches on the underarm I did a three needle bind off which it might call for I can't remember I didn't bind off any of the stitches I just kept them on and then picked up the few that I needed to just because I feel like for me I didn't need any more structure than what this was already going to give me and then I omitted the colour work on the sleeves I knew that I would get more use from it if I did not do them I knitted it quite a bit longer than the pattern suggested um, it does actually cover quite nicely but I quite like bracelet length but I wanted something full length in this woolly wool I knew that this is going to keep me warm in the winter and but also be you know rolly up a ball in the autumn or in August when we should technically be in summer but you know it's actually woolly knit weather apparently um, and I reduced the speed of the decreases and yeah that is this jumper it really was beautiful to knit I would say that if you don't enjoy long f dealing with long floats this maybe is definitely not the pattern for you I was going to use a technique that I've used a, f a little bit now in the, in the past called jacquard ladderback or ladderback jacquard I can't remember the which way around it is I think it's ladderback jacquard um, so you you kind of create extra stitches that sit behind your fabric that you've created um, which means that you've got floats that are stretchy um, and doesn't pucker the fabric or anything but I did find that for me I feel like I've got a handle on how to knit longer floats I don't know I'm wearing this so I don't want to show my belly too much um, but it doesn't pucker at all I think I handled it well I did admit the very top row of colour work I was going to maybe duplicate stitch it on but then it wasn't it wasn't worth it for me this is I'm perfectly happy with how it is I just didn't want to have such long float for the sake of it so I made a tiny modification and I'm really happy with the outcome so yeah I could talk about this jumper for a lot longer but I won't I really really enjoyed knitting this like I said it kind of once I started it kind of knit itself I really enjoyed working with these yarns this in particular is very sheepy um, very sheepy and I like that I quite like that the halo and the almost matching so there's the same kind of silver in this and then the same kind of brown in this that so it kind of isn't the strongest contrast but I think I couldn't be happier I really couldn't um, and knowing that it's got this this um, woolly knit yarn is very affordable it's 16 pound 500 grams and it's four ply so I think there's about 2300 meters of it so easy enough to get a sweater out of it um, you could hold it double for a DK weight which I'll show you something that I'm doing in a bit um, so it's it's kind of if you're looking for a pattern that uses maybe one really nice skein maybe I don't know maybe you've got a yak or a 
a really special skein of yarn that you're not sure. This is kind of a nice pattern. It, I didn't do the colour work on the sleeves, but the pattern called, I think for my size, it was about 150, 160 metres in the CC. But I, st I, I wound two skeins, but I still have this much left. Um, I have weighed it, I believe, and put it on. And if not, I will try. If, and, and then I'll try and deduct the weight from this and figure out how much we used. But yeah, I think it's quite a good pattern for that because of the amount of colour work. So yeah, that's all that to say. I'm really, really happy and this might be one of my favourite jumpers, which I often say, but I do think this is going to get a really big amount of wear this year. Um, I think I'm almost due to do a bit of a cull. I have, I'm hoping to record both a shawl video, because I think I've got enough shawls to kind of bring them together and why I want to pass a couple on, um, what ones I love, what ones haven't held up so well. But also, at the end of September I'll do a, a roundup of jumpers again for a, another year of knitting, which is so, I can't even. But anyway, yes, I feel like this is going to get worn so much. Uh, yeah, doesn't look like much until I kind of stand up, but I like it. I really, really like it. <laughs> mm. The smokiness of that is so nice. Um, okay, I'm going to show you this, but I'm not going to show you this fully. <laughs> so I've been lucky enough to do a collaboration with Hannah, who is a Chromatic Yarns, or The Corner of Craft. Um, if you don't know Hannah, I'd be surprised. If you do, you'll know that Hannah does really fun things. She does d and inspired yarn, she makes hand-woven like bead woven stitch markers and offers up a knitical roll yarn club which I have been part of a couple of times um I'd love to be more uh, but I do try and stay more towards non superwash and no nylon if I can but we had a little chat a while back and we talked about doing sort of a Christmas Eve cast on and I received the yarn and I'll show you this. This is what I've got left. And so this is going to be her Winter's Crest colourway. And it's very different for Hannah. Um, and I'm really here for it. It's got these beautiful speckers, speckles that I would say are really in my wheelhouse. Um, but they're in another person's wheelhouse who might be my DM um, perfectly. And we were, I was like, ah! Um, so I cast on because I'd already swatched three times for the pattern that I had intended on knitting and I'm only going to show you the back because the front's where the magic is. Uh, I am looking for probably two or three more test knitters uh, and Hannah has offered up 10% uh, off the yarn if you wish to help and test knit. So it will come with a CC of this gorgeous pink, but the yarn knits up so beautifully. So you can see the cuff, you can see the short row heel and the toe, but you can't see the rest. Um, I'm really quite happy with it. It's very cute. It is D&D &D inspired without being too D&D. &D. I think it's subtle. It's kind of modern, minimalist meets very festive, I think is how I would say. Um, but I really did enjoy knitting these. I have, I've been knitting a pair of socks using no nylon yarn that I'm loving knitting, but like it feels beautiful in the hands. But what I have to say is that I am knitting them in an undyed yarn and they're vanilla and that is not 
bringing me joy. Um, I will pick them up, I know I will. I'm hoping to maybe pick them up, it, you know, when I'm ready, but it just, I need a bit more interest and actually seeing, I'm not gonna show you the, I'm trying not to show you this side. Um, seeing the speckles just moving <laughs> really made me feel happy, uh, which I never thought is something that I would say, but it really did. It made me feel happy and I could see progress and yeah, it held my attention a lot more than the completely undyed yard did. Uh, so yeah, very excited about this. Like I said, if you're interested in test knitting some socks, uh, I did send my really, <laughs> I can't thank her enough, my really lovely tech editor, the pattern, so it should be ready fairly, fairly soon. And I will be sure to do updates when the like box is released and things. But yeah, very excited. So that's why I didn't want to share it last week is because I had done half of one and I thought, well, I just want to show you the full sock, but just, yeah. So D&D, &D, mm -hmm. I thought I'd put my phone on silent. D&D &D inspired festive socks, which has kind of got me thinking about the season. One second. <laughs> um, and the season is knitting season, which it always is, but I feel like with the weather being how it's been, it's been more so knitting season and it is coming. Winter is coming. <laughs> um, yeah. So where should we go? Where should we go from here? Should we talk about another project that I'm going to rip out? Um, and this, this is my cute little Nat Knits craft bag that Alex and I have matchy matchy bags for. Thank you, Natalia. Every time this, this project bag kind of gets everything that I want to take with me anywhere we go into it because it's a very cat safe colour <laughs> um, and it holds a lot. So I showed the swatch that I did a while back and I love this. This swatch, if I could knit it in this yarn, I think I would have finished this three times over. However, I can't. And the yarn I'm using for like the seventh iteration is for me going to be something that I wear all the time as a garment but I'll be sad to see it in a shawl and know that I'm not going to wear it as much because for me shawls are a much more winter item from what I'm learning as I'm getting used to wearing them or not wearing them and I would say autumn evenings through very early spring is when I get my most wear and then it would be a shame not to use this yarn and the yarn I'm using is the Peruvian Highland by Thick Skein. You have to forgive me, my hair is everywhere today um, and these colours, oh, they make my heart sing. A grey, can never go wrong with grey and muted pinky grey slash mauve almost. So I'm going to tear out, so I actually showed this a while back um, and I've re it entirely since then and we're gonna do it. Let's do it together. We're just gonna take it off the needle so that I, I'm committed. It's really fun. It's a really nice project but I know that maybe in Jameson and Smith or something else it might be but this yarn is way too nice for this project okay so I have an idea of one thing that I would like to knit with this yarn instead um, and that I will share a bit more once it's cast on because I'm not going to be able to with my uh, fantastic grasp on words describe quite what I mean I don't think maybe I will draw up a sketch and then talk about it but this yarn knitted 
uh, knitted dyed by the lovely Angie is absolutely too nice for this shawl that I envisage in my head. It was going to be a gift. It's just not right. So I'm very happy now that one project that has been sat on my needles for, you know, six months maybe on and off, like different iterations, is now going to be gone. Yeah, take that. And I don't know, I really love this. This little bit of yarn will be rescued potentially. I might, I might continue knitting with the item that I was going to with it and then unpick it only if I need to and it can just be for Audrey's little sofa, which is gonna need an upgrade fairly soon, but yeah. It was going to be so lovely, but onwards we do this. No point. No point, just... Oh, hi Audrey. What have you seen? What are you doing? Oh. Okay. Audrey, is that my nice new boxes? Hmm? You gonna come and say hi? She won't say hi for long, but we do like a little sneaky. Oh, you've been eating my eating my yarn again. I say that like she's been eating it. She's not been eating it. She's been like rubbing up against it, and she's got it on her chin. Anyway, <laughs> very kitten interrupted. Let's have a quick sip of tea while we're here. have two more projects. Uh, I didn't think I had anything to really talk about apart from this this week, but I do. This is going to be, you all know already how long it's going to be, but going to be a bit longer than I kind of thought it might be. So we'll save, we'll save one till last. We'll save the, the other colour worky thing till last because, so Mary Catherine, who sent me the gorgeous, I think it's Vib, um, Neuted in Yarn, also sent me this skein, which is kind of, um, the, the phrase is, I was going to use is heartbreakingly beautiful. Um, <laughs> as in, to me, it was so nice. I'm just going to bookmark something using um, so if you've been here for a while you'll know how highly I speak of Emily Foden who is the designer behind this gorgeous book that I'm sorry it's almost like the season where this book comes out every other day <laughs> every other day every other, every other podcast oh that was common every other podcast um and I never thought I would get to knit with Emily's yarn for a multitude of reasons, but getting Canadian yarn in the UK is so expensive. Um, I would obviously love to support Emily and there's a few items in here that I would, you know, dream, I dream about knitting in her yarn. But for now, I got a skein and I can't believe it. I really can't. So this is the... West Country 4-ply in the ghost colourway um, and it is 50% Exmoor Horn, 30% Blue Face Leicester, which I love, um, and a further 20% of Exmoor Yarn at Horn. So I wonder if that is two different batches of Exmoor Yarn at Horns. I don't know why I keep saying that wrong. And there's 388 metres per 100 grams. And it is spun in North Devon by John Arben and then dyed by Emily in Canada. So it's a bit weird to have it travel, but I understand having it in my hand why Emily would get it spun by John Arben because it's beautiful. It really is. And it's got this tiny kind of halo to it, which 
I'm absolutely here for. <sighs> so I divided it into two balls and I don't know why, because I haven't done two at a time in a really long time. But yesterday I cast on some socks at two at a time. So this is obviously another another pair of socks for my no nylon sock project. Um, so thank you so much, Mary Catherine. I, my heart, you, humans are awesome. Whatever the world sometimes and the news especially says, most of us are, I'm not, I shouldn't include myself, but most are just a magic. I just, I want to hug you all. Um, so whilst they do look very much like, oh, this is a vanilla sock, I'm hoping to do these as uh, a three by one rib with a, a, a one by one ribbed cuff. And I think that will be just enough to hold my interest and feel a bit more excited. I am already enjoying seeing this work up in that, you know, the colour moves, it's got, it's got depth. It, I keep looking down to see it rather than it just being undyed. And that's my own fault. I did purchase the undyed because I knew that I wanted Alex to over dye them or dye them naturally. But they will get knitted. I, I'm not I'm not good at having things languish anymore particularly. Um I did nearly put that shawl away. I said to I spoke to Alex about it again yesterday and it's just not it's not really how I like to work and it might be because I've written the shawl up in its entirety it might be one day I just cast it on and I find you know it's perfect but for now no um but they will get knitted and I'm really enjoying these so I have I have why am I becoming like a I don't know like a Oliver Twist Christmas Carol Cockney today I very much apologize uh, <laughs> I have com not converted. I would, I would, I'm knitting the favourite sock variation, but I'm knitting them toe up. So I'm basically just working backwards. Whatever the pat pattern says, I'm inverting. Um, I have opted to do 68 stitches. The smallest this pattern offers is 72. I know that 64 for me is a very good stitch count that's what I like but Emily has written it in here she prefers socks with about a quarter of inch positive ease um, and with them being ribbing I think that will be quite nice I'm hoping we're gonna see we're gonna see how that works with the no nylon um, but yeah so they are a lot of fun uh, there's sort of four variations that she includes I'm going to do them in one colour. I mean, I'm, I was tempted to mix it up, but I think for this no nylon, I'm gonna do my best to keep yarn separate until I've knitted at least one pair and then I'll use the rest of the skein in some fun, some fun pairs. But I think actually the colour that they are and it, you know everything about them will mean that they will get worn a lot. I am kind of hoping that they come out a little bit like these but fit me better um, so you have to forgive me like I said I've already been outside in these this morning um, but they they do have a three by one rib it looks like a short row heel it's probably not but it does and I might do the heel flap and gusset but toe up or I might use the beautiful LB hand knits Albiona's um, integrated basic heel pattern again we'll see but I really did enjoy that and I, I think that fits me nicely so yes finally this is another one that I'm very excited about this is one that I've had you know dreams about numerous times and the lovely Maggie of the Sonder podcast uh, Sonder Knitting and Reading who I've spoke spoken about a fair bit recently 
very lovely i really enjoy maggie's energy i'm so glad that she takes the time to record even though she works a lot um she's amazing um and maggie also made me this bag uh so i have to share it all the time this it's just so cool this is one of the you know it's one of my favorite bags it, it really gets used a lot um anyway maggie recently finished her bouquet sweater by john cocomata and i was like oh i just really want more color work in my life i don't know i don't know that i'm ready to swatch for the yell cardigan i want to go through my wool pantry because i definitely have enough yarn but it will be deciding how wild i am about pairing so i've got in my head potentially using this as my kind of main color i just need to weigh it and check that i've got enough and then using what i have because i definitely have enough single kind of balls of jumper weight uh, two ply four ply yarn i just need to decide and i want that to be a long term very thoughtful project i don't want to cast it on and suddenly or swatch and regret the colors and i want to spend time with it so in the meantime i did well one of them i had before so i had this previously this is another woolly knit cone this is i think it's called morning frost color and it's sort of completely a white with a sort of medium gray mild yarn and it, it transpired that it was going to be perfect and i i have the green that i used for the cycling jersey that you'll see but the green it kind of is in my wheelhouse but there's something about it that just doesn't quite it's not the most me and this is the color that i've gone for as the cc and i think together they are quite good like really quite good so i did a little swatch and i have opted to do this as DK so I'm holding these two colors like this double and this double because it's a one size pattern which kind of makes me feel weird um, but I really love it so I'm opting to do the DK a, a DK weight version and if I have to do some adjustments I do if I don't that would be great um, but I'm really loving how they're coming together. I'm hoping that because I'm doing it in DK, it's going to fit me a bit better than it might do if I was knitting it at the worsted or kind of Aran weight that it suggests. I'm going to pop these back in to stop the yarn going too far everywhere. Um, and I've got, I think, maybe a third of the way into the yoke repeat. Um, I'm not going to be able to show you perfectly because I did put it onto slightly larger uh, cables just because I was I knew that I was going to want to share this with you. But I'm really loving how this is knitting up. Um, so it does have long floats, and this time I am opting to do the ladder back technique, which. Am I going to be able to show you? Yes. Um, so here you can see that it creates this uh, fabric at the back. Hopefully you'll be able to tell. Um, so the stitches have got a lot more freedom. You can do long floats, but they're not floats um, with a lot more ease. And it doesn't pucker. So I'm really happy with how it's knitting up so far. The ladder back technique is worth looking into if you know if you if you have think that this might be something you want to do. That that's how I personally would knit it, and I'm going to. Uh, I've seen that I think Christy Glass simply snipped and tied the floats on her version when she knit it. 
Um, I think there's a few ways of handling it. I, the way I did the colour work floats on this one is I tried to make sure that if I needed to hold a carrier float along and wanted to hold it into a stitch, I would try and do it above one of the same colour. So in this case it was always the silver really that had the longest floats. So here I would have knitted I would have done it in a way that the float sat on top of this one, say. I hope that makes sense. So that if it does at all show through, it's showing through where you would expect it to be seen rather than on a brown stitch where it might be more visible. If that, hopefully that makes sense. Um, yeah, so so far it's got a tubular cast on. It has some short rows and the char repeat is strange, it's got three. So I think the main motif sits centralised on the front and then kind of off centre on the sides and then there's a chart around the bottom. I from memory think it has kind of like a chicken. So I might do some adjusting. Not that I don't enjoy chickens, I'm just not sure that that's really I know that farm emo is kind of my vibe, but I don't know that um, it's that much my vibe when these are like the most beautiful thistles. So we're gonna see, we're gonna be a bit playful with this, we're gonna see how it goes. I'm hoping that I will be able to work the first chart and then put it on a big cable and try it on and really see if and what I need to do to adjust it. I'm not going to worry until then, which might be a bit risky, but I'd, from my, my swatch to now, like I don't think it is. I think it's going to be absolutely fine. It's still going to have plenty of ease. Um, but yeah, uh, really enjoying knitting this finally. I've really been thinking about it and the a verb for keeping warm yarn is beautiful, but very expensive. So this this isn't, it, you know, I still question the ethics, but the fact that it's 100% British wool, it's very woolly, it's very sheepy, which makes me very happy. But this whole project, this jumper, will come in at it, less, well, if, if you factor the fact that I'm not going to use the entire cone, it will come in and it will, you know, that it might only be £12 or £15 for the entire jumper, which... It comes for a lot of hours of work, obviously, but that brings me the most joy to be able to sit here and knit this beautiful garment that... Anyway, yes, that is, that is everything for today, apart from maybe a public service announcement. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna switch. Um, yeah, so I really hope that you know, you have had sat down and had a nice time, whatever you've been doing, whether you have been sitting knitting along with me, whether you're having a break from knitting, whether you're sewing, no matter what it is, I just hope that you have enjoyed your time in this little, little space on the internet. I hope that whatever you get up to this week brings you joy. I know that it's still a bit of a strange time uh, for everyone. Uh, I can't believe that 2022 it's four months away I'm gonna start pondering Christmas gifts which might seem late or early depending on the kind of person you are but if you're working on anything that's bringing you a lot of joy at the moment I would love to hear about it because honestly these projects that I'm working on now are bringing me joy and that is absolutely the the best way to knit I think and to create um, yeah so if you have anything any experiences along those lines that you'd love to share I would be more than happy to have a little read about what you're up to and yeah I have a bit of footage to share from the weekend just a little moment from on the beach uh, which was really nice we got to celebrate a engagement party of one of Alex's dear friends 
and I got to gift the Sony uh, hat and cardigan to our lovely friend, which made me very happy. I was a, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of a weirdo, so it was a bit like, here you go, can we go now, Alex? This is, I don't, I don't want to see the faces, I don't want to know. Um, but the lovely mum was very happy and it's quite sweet to know that already once the baby grows out of the items it's going to go in the memory box forever so that's quite special to be part of something like that for a, a small tiny human anyway with that i will leave you with that footage i hope that i get to see you again very soon make sure that you are kind to yourself and you know be excellent to each other and don't forget to love each other Making this look easy, I <laughs>